Good morning, Ben Bin Fro. Uh, my name is Richard and I live in Bentley. And our thought for today, Friday the 17th of December, is from Psalm 77. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I saw the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands and I would not be comforted. I remembered you, God, and I groaned. I meditated and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked, will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favour again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought, to this I will appeal. The years when the Most High stretched out his right hand. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeem your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, God. The waters saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The heavens resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. The thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea. Your way through the mighty waters though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Over half term back in October, we as a family were lucky enough to escape for a few days down to Cornwall. I must confess that I do not really get the surfing thing, but it is one of Cheryl's great delights and passions. During our stay, a storm was forecast and the ocean swell developed quickly for the hardened surfers. As the height of the waves increased, I was reminded of a comment made by the surfer John Finnegan regarding one of his great fears. He wrote about the fear of the two wave hold down. The two wave hold down is when you have been so pummeled by a wave that you do not make it back up to the surface until the second wave hits you. The two wave hold down. In a similar way, I wonder if some of us are currently feeling that we are in a two wave hold down. The months of lockdown, fear of economic recession, schools being shut, inability to travel to see loved ones appear to be behind us. And then, wallop. Those two words of lockdown are being talked about again. Another strain of COVID is on the rampage. Fear is rampant as people clamour for the booster jab. Frustration is expressed over the confusing messages from government. I even found myself this weekend being, being a very minor petrol head, being disproportionately upset for, the, for Lewis Hamilton's loss of the Grand Prix. Even on a local level, within our benefice, there is uncertainty. Who might be our new vicar to help lead the church over the coming months? The closure of Bentley Medical Surgery and what that means for village life. And the concerns of growing isolation as we enter the winter months. A leading UK retail chain recently commissioned a survey by a team of psychologists into their key customer demographic, the millennials. 
those born between 1981 and 1996, and also known as Generation Y. They interviewed 800 people. The results were so startling that they did not believe them. They interviewed another 800 and got the same result. The results betrayed an alarming picture of an increasingly lonely and lost generation. More people live alone now than at any point in our recorded social history. On average, millennials spend six and a half hours a day on social media. Many who were interviewed considered work to be something they fitted in between social media and lunch. They found people had a very large number of friends, but an increasing sense of loneliness. We see in this psalm how the psalmist, in his distress, cries out to God. Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favour again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? But the psalmist goes on to recall some of the amazing and mighty ways in which God has acted in the past. In particular, he looks back to God's deliverance of his people in the Exodus. He prays, you are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. He meditates on the parting of the Red Sea and concludes, you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. So as we enter the week before Christmas, may we all be watchful of those who might be feeling or fearing an element of the second wave hold down. As with Moses and Aaron, might we develop human partnerships to break any sense of isolation. And finally, may we keep the birth of Jesus as our constant amongst the battering of the ways, and in so doing, might know, as the psalmist writes, your path led us through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. Have a great day.